Hi, my name is Andrew Warburton. I'm the property advisor. In this video, we're going to discuss the subject, how do I create wealth with hard money? Are you trying to get involved in the flipping business? Are you in a position where you need to sell a property, but it's not going to sell well because it's in bad condition right now? This video is for you. I want you please to watch all the way through to the end because I'm going to go over the bottom line right at the end and give you two points that will help really clarify your thinking. But this is a way you can create wealth. So hunker down, get your pen and paper and take some notes. And if you would, Take time to subscribe, we'd appreciate it. It makes a huge difference to us and we're able to communicate to you two or three times a week when we launch new videos. Put your comments below and click that like, it really helps the YouTube algorithm. So here we go with the question. How do I create wealth with hard money? You probably grew up where your folks maybe said, oh, never deal with those hard money people. You have friends who said, you paid how much in interest? But there were a few things perhaps they didn't understand. And please understand here, I'm not a hard money broker. So this is an educational video. This is not a solicitation for a loan. First of all, with hard money, here's some hard money facts compared to conventional loans. Number one, with hard money, this is what's interesting. It's the property that qualifies, not you. So you might be wanting to get into the flipping business or you might have a home with equity, but you don't have the cash to fix it up. It's the property that qualifies, not you. Whereas in conventional, it's all about your credit and your income. So you may have bad credit. You may have no income, but you might find a great deal that you want to buy. It's very possible you can do that with hard money because it's based on the property, not on your credit and your income. Number two, important fact. There are many, many sources for hard money. Some of those are private parties. Maybe they've got two million, three million, five million. They lend it out and they're looking for profit on that money. It's very profitable for a hard money lender. And so they're just people who are maybe even live in your town, all the way up to large corporations that specialize in hard money. But there's many, many, many of them. I pretty much guarantee you, if you put a post on Facebook that says, my home has equity, I'm looking for a hard money loan, you're gonna get plenty of responses. However, in conventional loans, most conventional loans are governed by HUD or VA or Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. And so the criteria are pretty narrow. So this way is narrow, this way is broad. Third, relationships matter in hard money. You might pay more interest and pay more points up front on your first or second hard money loan. But if you build relationships, it makes a huge difference. And you might go, well, Andrew, in conventional lending, I build relationships too. But yeah, I'm not talking about the fact that the girl who sells you the loan from Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac through some local lender is pretty, or the guy has a nice hairdo or something like that. And you play golf with him, so you think you have a relationship. You might have a relationship, but he has nothing to do with determining what the criteria are. That's Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. But with a hard money lender, you actually often build relationship with that private investor who works with you to get you those hard money loans. And the more properties you do, the more flips you do, the better relationship you make, that relationship counts. Kind of like it did when I was a, a younger man and you go into the bank and the banker knew you. They knew your name when you came in through the door and it affected your interest rate. It wasn't just a matter of being a good buddy and you share where to get a nice pair of jeans. It's a matter about getting a better deal. Relationships are very important in hard money. Hard money, basically the loan process is very simple. It has two parts. It's filling out a very simple application and they will value the property. However, with conventional loans, it's very complex. It's a long application. It's a detailed appraisal. There's a verification of income, a verification of employment, a verification of assets, a remeasuring with COVID of what you've done over the last three months, an analyzing of your, pro of your um, uh, income taxes. Very, very complex process. And that's why escrows take off in 30 or 45 days. However, most of these hard money loans take seven to 10 days. They're very quick. Next, hard money fact. Hard money loans have higher rates and higher costs. You're gonna have two basic um, f costs, if you like, with hard money. One is going to be processing the loan, underwriting the loan, and the appraisal costs itself. The second part is gonna be the interest rate that you pay. 
And interest rates are across the board. You can pay 7% on a hard money loan. You can pay 12%. I've paid more than 12%. Why would you do that, Andrew? Well, you've got to wait for the bottom line. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. So definitely hard money has higher rates and higher costs. Not something you'd want to do over the long term. Conventional money has lower rates and lower costs. Last main distinction. With hard money, the loan is based on something called the ARV, the after rehab value. Whereas a conventional loan is based on the purchase price. So the conventional loan is 95% of the purchase price, 80% of the purchase price. Most hard money loans are based on the after rehab value, what's that home going to be worth when you've rehabbed it? And you can get loans based on that, which will mean, and you got it, a lot less money down. Huge advantage. Okay, so what's the bottom line? Two major groups of people used hard money. Number one will be people who are in trouble. So in trouble, I mean, you're behind on your payments. And you know you can sell it, but you don't have time to sell it. Or the home needs a roof, and it needs air conditioning units, and it needs to be rehabbed inside. And if it were done, you would make so much more money, but you don't have the money. Now you have to consider, maybe the costs are higher, but the advantage you get by not going into foreclosure, the advantage you get by getting your home into better conditions so that you sell it for more far outweighs the costs of the hard money. So bottom line, if you're in trouble, don't just give away your home. Look into the hard money option. Make a smart decision, not a desperate decision. And finally, with the bottom line, what if there is opportunity? And this is how you create wealth. So you find an opportunity, an opportunity to buy a home because the people are distressed and they're leaving town and they just want somebody to buy it and they trust you. So you can then go to your hard money lender based on the after rehab value of that home and you can buy that home. So what if you pay 10% on the interest rate for three or four months? So what if you have to pay two points? If you're going to make 10 15% when you exit from the property. So if you're in trouble or if you're seeking to build an opportunity, I encourage you to think very seriously about what the opportunity is if you use hard money. Thanks for watching The Property Advisor. We've got a lot more videos coming. Please again, make sure you subscribe, join our family, and we will help you create wealth. That's what we do every day. Thanks for watching.